the comet system here from Zeiss, uh, we're talking about it today from an, an industrial metrology perspective. Um, give us a little bit of an overview of the product that we can see here. Okay, so the, the system itself uh, is used as a, it's a fringe projection system. So the idea is that you put a, a component on the table, the table rotates 360 degrees, and you take a series of images as the part rotates around. Uh, in capturing these images, we can then sort of evaluate this data so we can measure on it. We can also create STL files, reverse engineer, create CAD files, and do CAD comparisons, things along that line. Is its portability one of its the, the biggest advantages? Yes, yeah, certainly. I mean, the, the system itself can be moved around quite easily. Uh, you simply set up the rotary table. You you can obviously wheel the, the, the actual projector around and therefore position it in the correct position to get the best possible data. Uh, and if I was looking at the applications, we have a classic application here on the, on the table, yeah. which I can see the reasons for using that. What about if I had maybe smaller components with maybe intricate features, would it still be able to measure those? Uh, yeah, we can actually change the lenses. So the lenses it's using at the moment are for a particular job. Uh, but we can actually put sort of lenses on that allow us to get far finer details and higher accuracy and therefore measure smaller components. Okay, and, and also if I wanted to maybe um, measure larger components than that rotary yeah. table there, can they overhang the surface? Yes, they can. So we can actually move the projector back further. It can overhang the surface. As long as it's in the field of view of the lens, we can capture that. And what's the technology behind it? How does it work? You mentioned fringe. Can you maybe just talk about that a bit more? Uh, yeah, so the fringe projection, essentially, it's, it's, it's line of sight. So it's, it's not like a CT scanner where you capture everything uh, within the component, but what it can do is it captures everything it can see on the surface. So as it rotates round, it uh, projects this fringe over the part, and therefore, with that, it captures more data as it moves round. So I'm, I'm thinking as well about maybe aerospace parts, structures, automotive components. Yeah. This would lend itself ideally to that in all machine shops, wouldn't it? Yeah, correct. So, you know, whether the structure's uh, straight or curved, whatever it might be, it, as long as that is actually visible, we can capture that data. And, and it doesn't get rid of a CMM or other machines, does it? No. What's just... What's the fundamental differences, the different areas they fit? Okay, so obviously it doesn't get rid of a CMM. A CMM is a high accuracy system. Uh, with this, you, you've got to reduce your sort of resolution slightly, so you're not going to get the exact same data, uh, but it is good for really quick measurements, capturing a point cloud and storing that actually on your system forever. Because I've seen other systems where you would you wouldn't necessarily have the tripod here, yeah. you'd use it with y your hand. It, it, is that an option with this as well? It is. This is the Comet. We also have something called a T-Scan. The T-Scan allows you to use a handheld device and therefore run around it so you can use it on car panel bodies and things like that. You can actually go over the sort of surface, the shape of it and capture again the data in, in high detail. More flexibility. Right, what I want to do now is we'll go over to the screen have a look at, at the part and, and the measurement of it. Perfect. So it's one thing, Matt, looking at this screen and thinking that you've measured the part and it's showing you the results, but what's it comparing it to? Uh, so with this, with this part in particular, we've actually loaded in a CAD model. Um, so we've got the, the ideal part, the perfect part. We're then overlaying the point cloud that we've now collected using the Comet system. And what we're doing in, in overlaying them, we've now got this color map. And the color map will actually show us the deviation between the CAD and the point cloud. Right, okay, so what we have here is, what, does the red indicate where you've got the uh, may or the majority of, of inaccuracies? Uh, yeah, correct. So green is perfect, um, red is material on and uh, blue is material off essentially. So uh, as there's undercuts and things like that, you'll see it's blue and as if there's something on the surface that shouldn't be, it's going to show up as red. And really, that's about as much as you need to know, isn't it, with a system like this? Because you, you, you want to measure a part and then you want to know whether it's right to drawing. Uh, yeah, correct. It gives you a visual representation of exactly what it is you've got in front of you. Uh, you can take this part and load it into Clipso, a software obviously for the CMMs, and we can do sort of inspections on Clipso as well. Uh, but for a visual check, it's a very quick and effective way of seeing if the part is, is true or not. Uh, what about rever the reverse engineering side? Is that possible? It is. So yeah, from capturing the data, we can actually also do reverse engineering. So we can create STL files, step files, and other file formats so that you can load them into CAD stations and other software. Uh, with, with software and hardware like we have here, there's always a learning curve. It, it, you know, would you come here to rugby and pick, pick this up, how to use it within a day? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's relatively simple to use. I mean, the training for this sort of system is around a day. Um, you know, as long as you've got a, a basic understanding of, of engineering, you, you should be pretty, pretty smooth on picking this up. Good stuff. There you have it, another classic industrial metrology uh, machine here from Zeiss. Thank you very much, Matt. You're welcome. Thank you.